Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 3G IQ podcast. I'm joined here with my co-host, Frank Gao, and our special guest, Tyler Ariano. Now, Tyler Ariano, he's uh, the coach of the Marine Corps action shooting team, came to us about two years ago as a summer shooter. And then last year, he was with us full time, um, has made some great progress and uh, really helped develop and shape the team into what it is today with his personality, his wit, and his eagerness to not only learn and be humble, but his ability to want to just continue to help and be a part of a solution. So Tyler, if you could, can you kind of give us some of your background and where you're from, previous units, uh, your path to the Marine Corps shooting team, and your history of uh, competitive shooting? Yeah, so um, Matt, thanks for having me. I, uh, I kind of came to the team um, just a few years ago. So I'm an infantryman by trade. Uh, I've been in 10 years now. Um, started off with security forces at a fast company uh, down in Norfolk. Um, then I went to 1st Battalion, 1st Marines um, out of Camp Pendleton. I then went to 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines uh, out in 29 Palms, missed 29 Palms. Um, I've only been there once. I, I love 29. I mean, you know, the 95 isn't there and there's hardly any people. Um, a lot of great camping out there too. We'd uh, always go up to Lake Mojave uh, in Nevada. Um, but my, uh, my journey to the team. Um, so I had never even heard of the Marine Corps shooting team uh, up until 2019. Um, I was supposed to be an instructor uh, for like a Lance Corporal seminar or a corporal's course. Um, but that course ended up being canceled and my company Gunny was like, there's a shooting competition, uh, over at the MTU. Um, would you like to go? And I was like, yeah, free ammo. I mean, I, I like to shoot, um, born and raised in Montana. So I grew up with guns, but I never like competed or anything on my own. Um, so I did the Mick Mick at 29 Palms, ended up, uh, getting a bronze rifle medal, uh, my first time competing and it just kind of got the hook in me. I was like, wow, this is out there. Um, This is definitely uh, something I want to pursue. And I came back to a couple more Mick Mix. And then um, I was fortunate enough uh, during COVID um, to come out and be invited uh, as a summer shooter. Um, And I did my summer season on the three gun team. And I knew that was it for me. That's the team I wanted to shoot for. And, Happy to be here. So I I just have to ask this because you are from Montana and I just started watching the series Yellowstone. Uh, so uh, how, how, you know, realistic is that show? I mean, it obviously has its Hollywood touch that you have to add, but if you want to talk about a bunch of Californians coming to Bozeman, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, uh, I remember a story whenever you and Glomba went out there to – what was it, a state level match or something like that? And uh, yep. you lost your phone or something like that. And, you know, you had to get I did. The cops involved because a bunch of crackheads or meth heads like stole it. It was like a really complex story. And like Glomba, you know, John hooked up with some female. <laughs> yeah, long story short, I uh, got my phone stolen at a bar in downtown Billings and I tracked it um, to a trailer out in a, this little town called Lockwood and uh, me, like stereotypical, like meth trailer park. Um, me and Glombo, we rolled out there, um, scouted it out. And then, you know, being from Montana, you know, pretty much everyone. So uh, my sister has a friend that was a deputy sheriff. Um, so he came out and sure enough, got my phone back for me. And then uh, that was pretty much the end of that. So I remember like whenever we went out to the Wyoming governor's match a couple of years ago, me and Captain Scott, we were driving to the airport, driving back to the airport after the match and everything. And out of nowhere, we get pulled over. We weren't speeding, nothing like that. Like we're in a blacked out SUV and we're like, man, I bet this guy thinks we're running drugs or something like that. And so he pulls us over. We roll down the window, you know, pull out our IDs and everything. And, uh, and he's like, you guys are kind of far out of town or like, Oh yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're with the Marine Corps shooting team, this and that, you know? 
uh, we flew out here to Wyoming for a match and everything. Hey, you want to watch some shooting videos of what we do? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'd love to. So we showed him a video and like he was like, that's really cool. Handed the phone back. and He's like, you guys have a nice day. Went on our way. Yep. Just a little highway interdiction. Mm hmm. Uh, I got a follow-up question about your time at Planet Palms. Did you do any civilian competitions while you were out there? Uh, no, so none. I um, When I shot my first Mic -Mic, um, it was very shortly after, I think less than a year after, um, I, uh, I had then went out, shot my summer season. Um, so my competitive experience before I even came as a summer shooter was – strictly limited um to the mic mix but i mean you know i was a single marine out in 29 palms at california i didn't even have my own guns there anyway yeah um reason i bring it up for any of you listening from the west coast if you're stationed in Fountain, miramar 29 palms there's a club called linea del fuego and they shoot over at the paddle shooting range it's out in temecula that's where i got my start in three gun um talking to chris scott that's actually where he got his start and um, we um, were swapping a story because it's an interesting range. It's got all these steel targets up on a hill, right? And sometimes you get shut down because it's on a, it's on a, a Native American reservation. And if they're having like a funeral procession, like you just sometimes have these random hour, two hour ceasefires. But there's a guy that will sometimes drive across the top of that ridge where the targets are. He doesn't tell me where he's going. He just decides to send it. And then everyone <laughs> sees this white truck. They're like, oh, it's the miner. He's like, what, who is this guy? And you just stop shooting and you just watch him cross. And I asked, I asked one of the guys like, does he tell anybody before he comes back? They're like, no, we just gotta watch out for him. So very strange place, but the really, really quality match. Um, and I don't hold it against you. Like it's like two or three hours away from you. Like you said, really difficult to get into that kind of scene in California. Um, let's talk about the summer season. So how has it gone so far? Um, let's start with coming out of championships, how you picked the shooters that you did, which major matches that you've hit so far and what your training schedule has been like. So coming out of championships, um, we, when selecting the summer shooters that we ended up uh, picking, um, I was actually lucky enough. I had came out uh, and did an MTT uh, for 2-2 and 2-8. And it was at that MTT uh, where I first met Corporal Galloway uh, at the time. So I was able to actually work with him before he even shot his first Mic Mic uh, with us. So establishing that early um, was both a factor in I think the MTT helped him perform to a higher level uh, at the Mic Mic, as well as me being able to scout him a little bit longer uh, than some of the other people. Um, but we also brought out Sergeant Muller um, from same area. Um, we looked at his stats, not just from the official match, but we looked at the practice stages as well and kind of did like number crunching from each stage to really identify because just because you know you might not have placed super high uh, that doesn't mean that you don't have strengths that really uh, tailor to us um, so that's kind of how we picked um, but this the season's gone really well um, the big strengths um, that I've seen from these summer shooters and what makes my job as a coach so much easier is their willingness to do whatever myself and you know go king um have for them they're just eager to learn super stoked to be here um but their mental toughness and their ability to like shoot just shoot their own match they're not trying to like push to a level that they're not at and they recognize that and i think that is what has helped them get from where they started to where they are now. And uh, which matches have you guys shot so far in the, in the summer season? Uh, so the most recent one uh, we shot, we uh, just shot Wisconsin three gun where uh, Sergeant Muller and Corporal Galloway both uh, took third. Uh, Muller uh, took third in the modified division. Galloway took third and limited. Um, at JP Vortex, uh, Alex Goking took third 
um, in modified and then also uh, was the high military uh, for that match. Um, those are kind of the notable uh, finishes um, for our most recent matches. So talking about that, how would you say you've balanced the amount of training dedicated to each weapon system uh, in the in in the sport? Um, obviously, you're dealing with three guns. Like, what complements each other? How do you you know? How have you handled the training of the summer shooters and your training as well? So obviously, initially. Um, kind of establishing a baseline um, for them just out on the range, figure out what their strengths and weaknesses are to kind of, kind of identify their low hanging fruit. And then once you get them into their first match, when you're able to really analyze the video um, and you can start to kind of pick apart, um, that is definitely kind of what drives the training. But these guys themselves are the ones driving that training because with that self-discovery, they know exactly what they need. Um, there isn't like a one size fits all. Um, but for these guys to have that maturity and the um, ability to kind of start to recognize those things this early is extremely impressive. Um, but I guess that's kind of how we would end up balancing uh, what our focus is going to be on. So you kind of mentioned something that uh, that interests me, and I know the the pistol team does this a lot. But have you guys really started implementing like video analysis into like post match reviews of what you do? So it's something that we could we could be doing better. Um, we don't do it to the level of the pistol team, um, but we are getting into like the um, for a lack of a better term, I guess the science of like video analysis um, where we've been, especially uh, with our mobile training teams that we do um, look like taking the numbers that we're able to get um, from a lot of the TCSs that we run people through um, correlating that to, like matching it to a video, if you will. So if you can get a video of somebody performing TCSs at the beginning and then comparing the video with the TCSs at the end and being able to identify on video and being able to show somebody exactly like, is it, these are the adjustments that you've made. You can see it to help make a better mental imprint um, of kind of the right thing to do and why they're gaining their success and develop and their development. So from a numbers perspective, uh, how much how, how much would you say you shoot per weapon system and uh, how has that translated into performance? Uh, per weapon system, I would say as a team, we probably shoot maybe 4,500 pistol a week. Uh, maybe 2,500 rifle. And then we were a little bit heavy this year uh, with shotgun, but I think uh, that's a testament to some of our increase uh, in uh, finishes, um, shooting that shotgun a little bit more. Uh, we didn't really do a whole lot of it um, last year. And I, I mean, part of that is, you know, running into issues um, with some of our guns. Um, but I would say maybe 3,000 shotgun a week. Okay. I was about to make a joke about rookie numbers, but those clearly aren't rookie numbers. <laughs> um, follow up question to um, Matt's question actually about video review. Um, do any of you guys use like first person um, hat mounted cameras at all? Uh, no one on our team uh, does. Okay. Uh, it's something I started doing a few matches ago. And aside from it looking cool, right, for the gram, mm -hmm. uh, shooting is a very visual discipline. And with that many things going on at the same time, it helps sometimes to parse out whether or not your eyes are going to the right place, like going to your magwell, looking to the spot you're supposed to move to. I found it very helpful for diagnosis. So just something else to mention there. Yeah, um, that's definitely something that I've wanted uh, to get into. Um, 
I'll admit I am not very uh, technologically literate, especially when it comes to like videos and camera work and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely something I need to learn a lot more about. Um, but I'll say I'm guilty of that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, sh I'm should be out there uh, at SAT tomorrow. So if you guys are training, you can come by and look at my setup. It's pretty easy. You just have to remember to hit it before you, uh, like at the, at the end of your make ready sequence. I'm um, actually doing a pretty cool uh, shoot with MSAL this week. So I'll, I won't be at Battalion this week, but. Okay. Yeah. Whenever we run into each other next, I, I found it to be massively helpful. It's just, it's a little awkward because it hangs off the, um, the front of the, um, the bill of my, yeah. my cap cap um, looks kind of weird. I actually have it hanging down in front of my face. So uh, the joke is that, you know, you, you can uh, record all the, uh, all the people avoiding eye contact with you as you walk around the range, but um, no, it, it's really helpful. So um, teaching summer shooters, right. You're taking somebody, I mean, you're looking at potential, but what were some of the difficult concepts for them to grasp in the beginning? And then now that they're like placing an actual matches, what are some of the plateaus or obstacles that you're dealing with now? So at, at the beginning, uh, like I talked about, like shooting your own match, um, especially like coming somewhere where you haven't done, um, like you haven't been a competitive shooter before and then you come train with us and you see like guys that have far more experience shooting and like the initial face value you're like i should be shooting like that if i want to be competitive um but getting it into into them early that you need to shoot your own match like don't be so focused on the outcome focused on the in-between and that development and you you will get there um these guys had a lot of patience um they were extremely receptive um i this isn't a bad talk any summer shooter we've ever had before this just was a different group of summer shooters um and it was an absolute pleasure working with these guys um having them uh both uh, pull out third place finishes uh, at a major match when we weren't even supposed to be finished with our season with the summer shooters uh, at this point, they were still supposed to have um, a couple more, um, you know, things not in our control. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to hopefully have these guys back uh, in a permanent status. And I can only imagine uh, where they can go from here. Uh, but I think Muller and Galloway are definitely two names that, you guys will be seeing uh, more of in the future. So do you have any particular weapon systems that you're most confident with? Uh, and what would you say needs more work? So surprisingly for me, um, I'm sure Matt, you might remember. Um, you my sucked at pistol in the back. Horrible. Of the day. Uh, Kyle Hudson and Jared Adams. I remember spent about probably an hour and a half in like, 150 rounds of TZZ super hot 45 trying to teach me how to shoot pistol, uh, at championships, uh, just me and them. Cause I was so atrocious with it. Um, but for me this year, my pistol has just, it's been working for me. Um, my short range rifle, uh, could be better. I, I need to be more confident, um, in, like calling my shots and moving quickly uh, for my short bay rifle. Um, I would say that for me personally is what needs work. You say more on like uh, offhand rifle shots, like hundred yards in. I would say for me, it's the ones that are in between like 25 and 40. Okay. But long range has worked out really well this year. I couldn't be happier with how I've done with my long range rifle. And then, Sh shotgun modified division is just cheating <laughs> but no it's it's been good um my well, for for your long range work what what's kind of been your uh your your path to success there um because i i remember in you know previous seasons like it was just you guys would go out and shoot some of the targets that are already up in place did you do anything different this year yeah, so um, the QPS um, 
the quantified performance series at uh, Quantico has definitely helped me uh, with my long range rifle. And I think it, with the other guys as well uh, that have shot that um, dabbling into like the PRS QPS has definitely um, accelerated uh, my abilities uh, for long range rifle in three gun. Uh, so <laughs> quad ones, how many shotgun shells do you think have been dropped in matches in practice over the course of the summer season? Oh, in practice, hundreds. Um, at matches, surprisingly, I, I wouldn't say that many. Um, as a team, up until this point, I would say maybe, maybe like 10, 10, 15 in between there. Um, Shit, I remember last year with Lieutenant Ambridge, uh, on average in a match, you'd probably drop about 30 rounds. I remember last year at Wisconsin, whenever we were doing the jungle run, you just had to follow the path of unfired rounds that he dropped. Oh, the uh, the jungle run at Wisconsin this year, that was a uh, nightmare fuel for me. I uh, fired my first shot, realized I didn't have ear pro in, and I was just like, I'm just going to finish it and uh, kind of forgot everything I was supposed to do after firing the first shot. I was just like, oh, that's loud. Yeah, it's definitely rough. Um, who would you say out of the summer shooters and uh, the actual members of the team has the slickest quad load right now? Alex? No, Corporal Galloway, or yeah, John Galloway, Corporal Galloway, he has buttery quad loads. It was funny at the beginning, they both started uh, doing strong hand uh, quad loads. They soon then started playing around with. Uh, weak side quad loads and after they did that it just clicked for both of them but Galloway's quad loads are buttery so uh you know we don't get to go to all the matches that we want to mm -hmm. um we're kind of limited to what our budget and schedule will allow with everything that we do have go on going on what are some matches that you would like to get out to that you haven't been able to go to uh, this year and previous years, but that are on your radio radar and uh, you want to get out and shoot? Oh, the one that jumps off the page, like right off the bat, number one is Duskin three gun. Well, I mean, I, yeah, it's done. I'll make sure for next year. Yeah. Yeah. Duskin is definitely one. Um, if uh, the if USSL gets Wyoming Governor's match uh, next year, we'd really like to do that one as well. I would say the only thing to look out for is participation. Yeah. Like, got to look at the numbers. Like, it, you know, as cool of a venue as it is, it will be, you know – the quality will depend on how many people are there as well. Yeah, because how much did Surefire Worlds have? Like 60s? 20, maybe. Yeah. That's Low so numbers. Yeah, it's disappointing. Are you, guys gonna, like are you guys going to be going to Gen 3 Gun this year? We are. Okay. We are. That's actually the uh, next one we're going to be going to. Uh, unfortunately, uh, JKM uh, we lost that one. Um, so Gen 3 will be our next big major match that we're looking at. Where's uh, Where's Gen 3 at? Uh, it'll be at Clinton House. Oh, South Carolina. No, Gen 3 is not at Clinton House. Oh, that's no, Pro that's uh, Missouri. I yeah. Yep. yep. That was my mistake. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let Chad know that you said that. What's his nickname for you? Smalls? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm skinny. Glamour's yep. new stash. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's gonna he's gonna fuck you up. <laughs> uh, I'll argue him to, to him uh, about some baseball or something. Mm -hmm. Well, Tyler, we uh, we appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing sharing with us how the summer season's gone. Anything else that you'd like to leave with the listeners or the Marine Corps at all? Be about shooting. Um, be about getting competition and the floor is yours yeah so just know when it comes to shooting there is no one size fits all so i mean e even like 
get out, experience like different instructors, uh, different training programs or classes if you can go. Uh, but just because it doesn't click at the beginning, um, don't be discouraged. Um, just know that it's up to you to figure out what works for you. Uh, what works for me doesn't work for Matt or yourself, um, but having that self-discovery and like learning on your own is gonna be really important. Um, so just keep at it and don't, don't get discouraged, try new things, uh, meet new people. Um, I've learned a lot of stuff from you, Matt, all, a bunch of guys back at the team, people out on this competitive circuit, um, different, law enforcement agencies. Um, but if I can take like one thing from each individual that I can meet, that's going to help make me better um, in the long run. Um, so that's, I guess, my parting shot, I suppose. Well, I appreciate you coming on here. Um, appreciate you uh, giving all the information that you've given off. And I wish you and the rest of the guys success with the rest of the year as well as, you know, the future seasons of the team. I'm really excited to see where you guys go. Awesome. Yeah. Th thank you so much for having me. Um, my last save round is I just want to thank uh, Sean Muller um, and uh, John Galloway uh, for their awesome performance uh, as a summer shooter on the action team this year. Um, I'd also like to wish fair winds and following seas to Tony Alvarez he uh, just shot his last match um, with the three gun team. He's uh, going to be moving on to recruiting duty. And I know he's going to be just as successful as a recruiter as he has been a shooter on the team. Um, but everybody on action shooting team kick ass job so far this year. And uh, we're going to finish on a strong note before we roll into Mick Mick season. Awesome. Well, listeners, I hope you enjoyed listening to this. Let us know what you think. And if there's anybody specific you want us to interview or talk to or any specific questions you have for the action shooting team, please let us know. And we'll, uh, we'll get with uh, Tyler and uh, Alex Goking and at, uh, ask some of your questions so they can get something back to you. Have a great one. Bye.